guys and welcome to our first technical talk episode so I am talking to an amazing woman I had met her about three years ago it is none other than the Simone Filer and we're discussing today audiobooks so Simone actually runs her own company she runs Brisbane audiobook productions and I really want to talk to her today about why authors should be investing in audiobooks it's something that I personally have been looking into doing for a long time now and I want to know why how where and also i think this is a great way for us aussies to locally support uh simon and her business as well so let's get straight into it and let's see what we can learn from simon and why we should be doing audiobooks come on guys let's go <laughs> First of all, all right. I want to say thank you, Simone, for coming on today. I'm super excited about this conversation. Me too. Thank you, Kaya. I really appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. Well, let's get straight into it. So can you explain to me, you run Brisbane Audio Book Production. How was that founded? Okay. Well, I actually was, I've worked in radio for about 30 plus years, so I'm fairly good at, at audio. I've been a producer, music director and an announcer and then I had children and then I kind of missed radio. I was working remotely from home, missed radio, so I thought I'd give a, um, a hand into the community station here in Logan where I am, 101. And I was doing a morning show and the sponsor was in-house publishing and they had, a, they had a couple of people from there come in and chat with me with authors and uh, one of the guys asked me, do you reckon you'd be able to make an audio book for one of their customers? And I was like, yeah, I can make an audio book. Mm, can I make an audio book? And I had, a, I had this studio here, but it was completely different. It was a music room beforehand. And then I started thinking, oh, can I bring anyone into this studio? I don't know if I can really do that. So I had a couple of mates help me, Belinda and Brendan. They were legendary, helped me build my booth. And so then I said to in-house, yeah, I can do it and basically got the first author in and yeah, 21 authors later. Wow. So, so it's how, been very exciting. How did you find the trends? Cause I find it very interesting. Like with your experience with 30 years in the radio, um, that, that whole world intrigues me. Obviously I haven't touched it, but it really does because I love the personalities that you hear on all the time. So how did you find the transition from being the voice behind you know, a radio channel to creating other voices more so because you, you don't do the voice acting yourself, do you? Um, well, I, d I have narrated some of the titles, yes, most definitely. Um, I don't know, that's an interesting question. When I was growing up, I wanted to be famous. That's how it all started. I was going to be a rock star. <laughs> and then I grew up in Mackay. I played a bit of guitar, was in, in bands, and I was really into the music scene. So that's pretty much in Mackay. I was thinking, how am I going to get more involved in music, in the music scene, because I knew every song at the top of the chart for, you know, many, many years. I researched all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then I had to do work experience at school and they said, uh, where do you want to go? So I thought, well, the radio station is probably the best bet. So I did my work experience there and that was, yeah, I was sold. I was like, yep, I want to work here. And where I went to school, I had to ride past the radio station every day to get home. So I was <laughs> lucky they didn't police ban me because I was in there every day saying, look, you know, can I, can I do something? Can I, you know, is there anything I can do? And I was peeling, like remember records back in the day? I was peeling labels from them because it's kind of a long story, but you know, they, they find a, a record, they put it on, um, it goes up in the uh, rotation for how often it's played and they had different stickers on the record so I used to pick them off and do other very meaning, meaningful, meaningless tasks like that, well probably meaningful maybe and I also learned the panel in my own time so how to, so how to put everything to air and one day this one guy who was operating Take 40 back in the day didn't turn up and the boss was at a standstill as to who to put in there and I'm like oh pick me, pick me and so that was how I first got on air. And then eventually I started reading the weather. And then, yeah, eventually I just really started loving radio and thought, okay, I'll put my rock star thing on hold for a while <laughs> and I'll stay in radio. So I did that. Yeah. And I loved announcing to begin with, but then I got really into the side of music directing. So that was one of my main, main things in my 30 year career. 
And through that, I did producing. So I made, you know, promotion promos for radio stations, ads for radio stations as well. At some of the regional stations I've worked for, yeah, pretty much had to do everything from announcing to, to um, yeah, to I was doing music directing, assistant program directing and producing. I won't drop any names of what stations <laughs> they were. But, um, but, yeah, so I sort of had a big handle on all of it. And I guess... With age, I thought I don't really need to be the rock star or the star of the show anymore. I'd done announcing, I'd proven a good track record and I kind of just thought, you know, I'm open to doing production because it, I just really love audio and love putting the music underneath the announcers, making ads and stuff. And it was kind of like a natural progression. So I, while I still like narrating, I really like bringing the best out of the authors that come in here. You know, some of them come in here and say, like, I don't know how to do it. I've got no, no experience. And seriously, after like 20 minutes, if you can overcome your shyness in front of a microphone, and hopefully if I put you at ease enough, you're going to be feeling like, you're a rock star in there, you know what I mean? And you can do this because you've written it. And I can confess, I've actually worked with you before. So uh, me and Catherine came to your studio and yeah. we did a interview ourselves, which was amazing. And I was, it was quite a few years ago, so I had the shaky voice happening and I was like a scared little deer. And I took a whole pile of photos in the booth. And it was, it was such an amazing experience as well because that was the first time I had ever been exposed to the audio book world so to speak and you were very comforting and even though we had only done an interview between Catherine and I you were on the side and you were like always helping us and really putting me at a comfortable ease and I think it is definitely getting over that I guess initial fear of hearing your own voice or whatever sort of happens you go really shy but Mm. I want to ask a very specific question only because I I enjoy ads and marketing and I think that we always have things to learn. And you said that you did ads for radio. What does that entail? So what did you find made an effective radio ad? In what do you mean by vocal delivery or the production or the right? Like it's all, it's everything. Yeah. It's from, like you need a good, you need a good copywriter to condense. I mean, you know, that spool that I just gave about me being a rock star from the beginning is not, you need to really be able to condense the information into a very short, you know, punchy, gra- attention grabbing, you know, 30 second ad that's going to get your message across. You need the appropriate voice um, that's targeting your demographic to deliver that ad. You need someone with you know, great production skills that can put the right music underneath it and basically all sound effects and make it come alive. So it's, it's quite a, pro- it is quite a process, you know, and, you, and as, as much as I think a lot of people would like to just think I can read an ad, it does, it takes practice. It's not easy. Enough practice, you can, you can do anything really. So, so yeah, if, it, if you're looking to get into that market, I would, you know, pick maybe a place that you like, try and write a 30 second ad about it and just practice that, deliver it, you know, as as best as you can. Do 150 different takes of it, record yourself, you know, compare it to what you're hearing on the radio from the professionals and, and yeah, practice makes perfect, basically. Opportunity presented itself to you for audiobook. And, and the, by in-house, should I say. And so I actually, I've met in-house publishing as well. So I'm like, oh, I know these people. And they're amazing yeah, as well. They the are. Team. I love them. And you, like you said, you went with it. So you you changed going from music to audiobook. So you would have now after being, because you've been running for how many years? Is it like five, six? Yeah, four actually. Just four. into, it's, I'm into my fifth now. Yeah, mate. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm very, very happy. So you, you would have learnt a lot about, obviously, audiobooks and you probably would have had to learn a lot about the author industry as well and how that correlates between. So from, from your perception, why do you think it is important that authors start investing in creating audiobooks? Well, there's a broader audience to reach with audiobooks because a lot of people are now, well, not so much now because of COVID, <laughs> But, you know, life had sped up so much and people were commuting for such long times. People are exercising, working in their gardens and um, doing household chores that people like to, 
like um, unlike back in the 80s when you listen to your Walkman listening to music, people like to now listen to audio books, you know. So there's a, a brand new audience, basically, that authors can reach. Um, some of the statistics that I've read is people, there's the majority of people under 35 in America are don't read they only listen to audio books yeah and the the audience is increasing and it has 30 percent for the last i think it's about six years now for people that are listening to audio because you know it it gives you more time to do other things listening than just being able to sit down and read a book i only started listening to audiobook uh probably about two years ago which is when i started realizing audiobook existed um, I wanted to start listening to them because I was like, oh, should I make my books into audio as well? And I re, I, sorry, I listen to audio books a lot more now because when I'm walking to work, you know, 30 minutes here or going for a morning walk or in the car, it just, it makes it very convenient. So I think that's why audio books definitely are booming at the moment. It's the convenience because we're not, well, we have a lot of time now, but yeah. usually we don't have a lot of time. So it just makes it a lot more convenient as well. So for little authors like me who are actually looking into getting into the process of creating an audiobook, are you able to give me a step-by-step -step process so I know what to expect? Yeah, for sure. Well, the first thing, if, if just say you emailed me um, and said, I'd like to make an audio book, I would get back to you saying, look, you know, that's totally possible. Um, obviously, I'm based in Brisbane. I do have a couple of other contacts around Australia that, that I can get you into their studio if you want to self-narrate as an author. Like I said, you, you want to feel comfortable behind a microphone in a studio environment that you feel like you can deliver. A lot of people, particularly with self-help books, want to self-narrate. So I, I strongly encourage people to self-narrate because there's nothing better than hearing it from the horse's mouth if you feel comfortable and you're not too nervous. And like half an hour after it, being with me, you'll feel okay. Um, but I also have a selection of professional narrators that can narrate your work. So basically, I just ask you for your word count and a copy of your PDF so I can have a look and basically see how it's going to roll, how your story goes or how your self-help or fiction or non-fiction book is laid out. And then I'll basically send you a quote, work in a time, then after that, you get to listen to the audio files and then basically I can help you with distribution to Audible and Amazon and pretty much all of those online distributors. What do you think the most difficult part about if you choose, if because I know a lot of authors do choose to do it themselves, but sometimes they're not going into a professional studio such as yourself. And yeah. I know it affects the quality massively. What do you think the massive mistake is that people may find themselves doing without realising it if they decide to do it all on their own and why, you, why it's very important to hire professionals such as yourself to help them? Well, the majority of online distributors have, they've got specifications that you need to meet with the audio. So, I mean, a lot of people that aren't, you know, aware of what they're doing, probably won't know how to fulfill those specifications that are required for online distribution. So that probably would be the biggest, the biggest setback. They like clean audio. They like it within particular decibel parameters. And yeah, there's a couple of other requirements that they need that can be quite daunting if you don't understand audio, how to, how to put all that together, if you know what I mean. What do you think the biggest misconception of audiobook production companies are? Because I think there's a lot of people who don't really understand what they are. So do you find that when people first come in or meet you or start asking questions about it, were they like, oh, this is quite convenient. Like, I didn't realise that. I thought it would be this. Um, some have some have said that. I think the majority of people that have come, into me, come in with me is that um, they've already gone through the self-publishing process when it comes to you know writing their book getting it edited by somebody and they kind of understand that you need professionals that can help you get it to a, a particular stage so the people that come in with me they're basically happy to take my direction to you know obviously to make their book the best it can be so i know i want to talk about acx so for those who don't know ACX, it's obviously Amazon's program and platform that 
basically help authors find actors, actresses, some they have payment plans or royalty plans or what, or, you know, it's a massive platform. Um, I personally have looked at it as well, just to comparatively look at the big corporate scheme and then also local such as yourself. And I th one, I always think it's important to support your locals, but two, why do Definitely. you think it's more advantageous to go through your company as opposed to Amazon or ACX, should I say? Well, the first problem with ACX is that they're actually not readily available in Australia at the moment. So they're only really in the American and European um, uh, regions. They, I believe they are looking at opening here. So that's the main problem, basically. You can't get it done through there. So that's why I would suggest coming to me. <laughs> so I can, I can get it and I, and I can help you get it onto those platforms like Amazon, Amazon Audible, iTunes, Google Play and about 40 others so so I feel, I feel that's one of my advantages that I'm operating yeah to get self-published authors and and traditionally published authors as well onto audiobook format from Australia I feel like that's why I call myself the premier audiobook um, place in Brisbane in southeast Queensland because I feel like I'm one of the first people to do this and but I, I have heard through audible that ACX may be opening here but I have been hearing that for a little while and I think too, it's important because yours is a more personal approach as well. You're actually there with the author, stepping them through the process. Whereas when I did have a quick glance through ACX just to see what the what all the talk was about, it was very it, it's self-explanatory, but through a computer. It is an online platform. You're not going to get the help or guidance that you need you know you're going to have to still do hours upon hours of research and you should be doing that anyway whereas with you i'm able to have a conversation with you about it i'm able to say i'm not sure about this how how would i do this and you'll be like here's the answer whereas through acx you would have to wait you know three mm. days to a week or something for a response and then you might have another question so it's just more personal. You're not a robot. You're not a computer, you know. Not only with audio books, I guess, if you're publishing online at books and music, it's it's pretty tricky. I'm actually learning a new program that I'm finding just that, that I'm learning it remotely through the computer and there's no one that I can just say, you know, can you tell me how to do this? I've got to wait for a couple of days for an answer. So I certainly think that's one of the strengths if you come in with me. I can... And even if you've got any questions that you want to ask me before you come in, you know, I'm happy to, to answer anyone's questions. So please ring me if you've got a question. You weren't heavily involved in the publishing and author industry prior. What, what has been the most surprising thing that you found? Uh, so you're not, an, you're not a writer yourself, but obviously you, you help us massively. You have what we need and what we should be extending on in my eyes. We should be going forward with audiobooks. What's been the most surprising thing to you in the author industry? Well, it's really bizarre that you say that because when the authors come in to self-narrate, generally they'll be going through the book and then all of a sudden they'll come across something and read it and say, oh, that shouldn't read like that or there's quite a few print errors in there or that should have been the wrong way around. <laughs> I know that's so bizarre or they will you know, take down notes or I'll take down notes so that if they do a reprint of the book, they can put in what hasn't been put in. Because it's very different when you say it out aloud or when you read it out aloud to just reading it in your mind, you know what I mean? So I think that's been, yeah, one of the main things I've found that authors have discovered while they've come in and recorded their audio book. I, I think it's a really important perspective, actually, for people even writers, even if they don't pursue doing the audio book to, you know, when they get that final manuscript, read it out loud. It makes a difference. So price tag. I want to talk about money when it comes to audio books, because I know that personally I have been hesitant extending into audio book because it is a decent amount of money. And so I know I was originally apprehensive about the situation because you already invest so much money in your books, you know, self-publishing is expensive and you think, will I make my return on this? Why do I need to go into audiobook? And don't get me wrong. I personally think audiobook is the way forward. It is growing in readership or should I say listeners constantly. And it's only a gradual, but it's still growing because the busier we're coming as a society and people, we need that convenience to listen to audio. Mm. So I guess weighing up the pros and cons, I just, I feel like it's important to talk about money and why 
what your thoughts are on it because I imagine you probably get some apprehension around that when people are asking for quotes and such and why it is important to invest that money in the professionalism of it. Yeah. Well, with with that, it's only been very recently that they actually, ACX and Amazon and a few other companies, they don't necessarily need you to have a printed book. They're happy for you to go straight from to audiobook and have just your audiobook there. So it is transitioning and maybe one day, you know, maybe one day they will just be audiobooks. So that's one reason to consider. There's a lot of work that goes involved, you know, that's involved in it. Firstly, I mean, if, if you get a professional narrator, obviously they've had years of experience narrating and can get your story out you know, with the correct inflections, with the correct pace and and diction and, you know, soul that, that you want your book out there with. And, you know, to get a professional narrator, it kind of costs you a bit of money because you're getting a professional to do it. Self-narrating, well, that, it, you know, provides a lot of room for editing, basically, which is okay because, you know, I'm... I feel like I'm an expert at editing. You won't you won't pick up the edits in in a self narrated book by the author, but um that involves time. So generally speaking, any author that comes in and records their book for every hour that they record, it will take at least at minimum two hours to like edit and post in and in post production as well. So they're the main costs basically. And also when it comes to the professional narrators, I mean, we're all human. We all stuff up. They're not going to get it out first take. You know, if they're doing a 17 hour project, there is definitely going to be edit, you know, edits. And so we also allow that basically for every hour recorded, there's two hours editing. I mean, if you think about the process going through writing your book, how long that takes, and then to get a professional editor, it's, it's basically the same process. You know, it's a lot of time, but I think, yeah, the cost is, is worth it. And I'd love to be able to give you figures, but it's like asking how long is a you know, as a piece of string, because, you know, there might be an hour, a book that takes an hour, or there might be a book that takes 20 hours. So my quotes factor in, factor in the time that's going to be spent, but it's not, it's, it's really not as expensive as you think it is. You know, you might be, you know, taken aback thinking, oh, I didn't think it was that expensive, but it's probably the same as when you get your book, you know, edited and published by a publisher. It's on par. It's your decision whether you want to reach the most amount of people. It just gives you another platform to reach a whole bunch of other people that are listening to audio books. And like I said before, who knows, it might be the way forward where they now are accepting audio straight you know from manuscript you don't need the the paperback or hardcover in your pricing do you also to use the facility so obviously for you it would have been quite expensive to build your studio like there's a lot of expensive equipment in there i would know i took numerous photos with your very pretty and expensive mic um (laughs) and that was fun um what do you do you charge for the author to come in and to use that equipment or is it more so like if they come in and say it takes them all together about 10 hours to record their audiobook, and then obviously you would charge for your services of services of editing in it and rightly so because i know i couldn't edit you know it for the life of me um do you charge for that time being spent in the studio as well yes i do i charge a flat rate flat rate at the moment, um, which basically includes the studio and me being here. So when when you're narrating in there, I sit out here, coach you and go along with your manuscript to make sure that you're saying the right words or you don't miss words or, yeah, to work things out together if you want to question something. So I do that. That's a flat rate. And then I charge for the editing process afterwards as well. I love that because there's no way you would get that service in ACX at all. Yeah. So that's really nice, especially if they does choose to do it themselves. It's really nice to be guided in that sense as well and have basically you're your the safety blanket. Yeah, I think it's comforting for the author, but also you've got two sets of eyes on what's you know being recorded. Sometimes some of my authors have missed a line or they've missed a page or you know, they've said a word wrong or there's pronunciation where I've thought, I don't know if it's actually pronounced like that. There's a bit of a, a safety net there that they can rely on me and also just make them feel good about themselves. You know, sometimes you feel 
they're in there thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm doing this right. And I can say to them, have a listen to what you've you've read so that they can hear themselves back. And a lot of them go, oh, I hate the sound of my voice. <laughs> but by the end of it, they're happy. They're happy and they really like the way it comes together. And then w- once I'm finished it in the editing process and they've done pro- post-production, they're like, wow, <laughs> I didn't know I could sound this good. <laughs> I have a random question for you then. Okay. When we were <laughs> all scary. <laughs> the, 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 um, okay. <laughs> so you, as before, you said you loved doing you know, radio hosting and being behind the mic. And now you've come to a completely different world in the author industry. But I think that there is a lot of value in what you've learned and what you could teach other people. So my question to you would be, would you ever mesh those together? Have you ever thought about doing your own uh, podcast or your own uh, channel or something like that? Just so, I I just don't think there's enough encouragement or information out there about audiobooks, which is why I wanted to do this interview with you. And is that something that you would ever do? Because I guess it'll be kind of mixing the best of both worlds for you. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. Yeah, and there's many topics that have gone through my head that I, you know, I would love to interview my authors um, or do a podcast with the authors that come in to record audiobooks. I'm fairly time poor because I have three children. So I, you know, I allocate, you know, the school hours basically to recording authors that come in and, when they're not in, I, I'm either editing or if I've got booking consecutively, I'll spend the night time editing. But the my other time is spent. I've got twins that are 16 and a 13-year-old and they're very busy. They do, a, well, not momentarily, but they do a lot of sport and, you know, they obviously at that age, they want to go to the beach and, you know, I try to facilitate as much running around like a taxi. I know what mum's taxi means. <laughs> so I do a lot of that. That's like a one day thing, Kai, you know, I would really like to do it. When I have more time on my hands, I will certainly be pursuing something like that for sure. And what I absolutely love too, I believe it was your youngest who actually takes an interest in what you're doing, which is really, because you're super mum. When I met you, you're super mum through and through. Oh. Oh. And you are very like with their training that like it's very impressive of where they are being at state level and you are very supportive and very just consistent with them, which I find amazing. I'm obviously not a mother and I was like, what an inspiration. I loved it because your your youngest was with us when we were doing the interview and she, she loves what you do. She has a real interest towards it as well, doesn't she? Yeah. I think that was actually Sunny. She's my eldest. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, although although my that's okay. But my youngest Michaela, she ha- she well, she hasn't anymore. Although she is talking about it, um, she does a YouTube channel. But Sunny's really good at like video uh, editing, video and stuff. So she she recorded us and and put that podcast of yours and Catherine's together. So I could definitely all of them. They're all really smart. They're gra- you know A students, and it would just be a matter of me coaching them a little bit more to or not coaching but enticing them saying hey come and come and help me come and do this they're they're pretty open to it do you have anything else that you sort of uh want to express in this or even if you want to talk about your company or entice people over or just even tips for those who may still have reservations about audiobook or who are ready to get started they want to dive in where do we start Okay, well, I think the first thing, if you've got a little spark in there where you think, I, you know, I wouldn't mind recording my audio book, my first bit of advice would be start reading that book out loud. Just start reading it out loud as much as you can, even to the point that you record yourself on your phone or whatever you have so you can listen back to it. Same with what I said to begin with, you know, it's just about practice. So just start reading it out loud. If you have, have you know, thought, yep, I really want to do this, please just call me if you've got any questions about it. I'm really happy to answer anything that you've, you know, any question you've got about the process. Yeah, if you would like to hear professional narrators, I've got an array of those, hit me up and I'll send you out their demo so you can have, you know, listen to and see what you think. Yeah, basically, if you really, like, I I feel like I specialise in author narrators and my biggest a bit of advice is read it out loud. Just start reading it out loud. Get comfortable. If you really want to emulate like a booth environment, I would go into a cupboard or into the ladies' room or men's room <laughs> and sit there, even if it's like a brush or, you know, that you've got something that you're speaking into that you feel like you're setting up, you know, like emulating, like visualise yourself doing that 
and we'll, you know, we'll take you there. You care about obviously end result and product, but mostly what you care about in this transition is the author growing as well. Yeah, definitely. I think from, from my experience, the authors, they get a different, uh, I could almost well up actually thinking about this is that some of the authors, they've read their books so much, you know, as an author, you've read your book, you've been through it a million to a trillion times. The editor's been through it, you've been through it, and you're kind of at the end of it like, you're like, okay, I'm pretty much done with that book. I'm ready to move on to the next one, yeah? And, you know, the majority of authors, obviously, when they're doing the audio book, they think they're just going to come in, this is the last little bit, and it's going to be done and dusted. But by reading it out loud... And I don't know whether it's, you know, whether me being here makes a difference, but sharing it out loud is really, it's really voicing it. I know you've voiced it when you've written, but, but when you're actually saying it out loud, you're really voicing it. You know what I mean? So I have a box of tissues out here for me because I'm a sook. <laughs> and also for, for the narrators, you know, and a lot of them have said, oh, wow, I really thought I was over that. You know, I thought I'd come to terms with all of that. So so I really do think it's a very, it's a, a massive growth for the author to read it out loud. And, and I really do feel, find, I think, from speaking with them afterwards, that they, after that experience, they'd say, now I've dealt with it. Now I've put it to bed. So I love my job, Kaya. Hey, it's, I'm so lucky that I get to hear the, you know, the story directly from the author because it's, it's empowering for them to say it out loud. And it's, I just feel like I'm, getting a glimpse into their life and helping them, you know, deliver it to the world to be heard how it, how it was written, basically, how it was. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. It's really wonderful speaking to, to you. With you, you're, a, you know, you're an amazing girl. And I think you're really good at doing this as well. You drew out some really good stuff that I'd forgotten about there. So thank you. Thank you.